Good morning and welcome to Beijing. What is the first thing you would visit if you would come to Beijing? You're probably thinking Forbidden City, maybe yeah. Tiananmen Square. For but sure. that's not for today. We're going to start off in the hutongs of Beijing, the famous back alleyways. And we're going to go in search of Beijing's most infamous bird, the Peking duck. Ooh, mm. sounds delicious. So now we're going to walk around a bit randomly here in the hutongs, see what we can come up with. Right now we're in a part where there's not much people, which is pretty cool because if you think of Beijing as like 10, 15 million people living here, and here it's there's not tranquil. that many people. Yeah. We turned around two corners on one of the main streets here in the Hutong, and it looks like all Chinese have gathered here. It's really nice, it's like very quirky shops here. It's like, it's like a pig's paw. For lack of, I mean, they even put some corn on it. It's like they glaze it and then they put corn on it to make it into this delicious little treat. This alleyway is called Nan Lao Gu Xiang, which I'm probably pronouncing <laughs> horribly. Um, it is one of the. Yes, exactly. It is one of the more busy streets in the Hutong area. Much of Beijing actually originally was Hutong. But since 1990, they wiped out about 4 million square meters of hutong in Beijing alone. So that's about 40% of the old city center that was wiped out to put high-rise buildings and just make a whole new area out of it. So there are still quite a lot of places in Beijing where you can go and see a place like this. But, and also if you want to see like some riot gear, you know, like the original Beijing experience. I have no idea what this is, but it looks really weird and there are a lot of people waiting here. So I'm just going to get one and see what it is. It looks like a dumpling, a very wobbly dumpling, filled with liquid. You get a straw in it and you're supposed to drink it. I don't know if you're supposed to eat the dough, but there's like this uh, instructional video playing here how to, how to eat it or how to drink it. Yeah. It tastes weird. I was expecting it to be sweet. But it's actually savory. Ah, it says there's something in English. Crab dumpling soup. That also explains why there are small crabs on the packaging. <laughs> We're going to take a left here, away from the main alley, into the Mao Hutong. And this is what these little alleys look like when you strip away all the busyness and all the cafes and all the shops and all the tourists. Yep. It's like a normal residential area, a place where people live and where people send their kids to school and drive around. And it's and really cool to see the locals go about their day-to-day -day business. Also, it's something for me that I did not expect in Beijing. I mean, no. it's, it's such a massive, massive city, one of the biggest cities in the world. And when you veer off into these small streets, it feels a lot more like a smaller city or even like a village someplace. All that walking around has made us hungry. So we've come for the most iconic food here in Beijing, the Peking Duck. We're now in the Yingzhu Peking Duck restaurant. It's also perfect when you're on a budget, because sometimes Peking Duck can be quite expensive, 40, 50 dollars or even more in some of the more expensive places. Here it's just a bit more than $20, so it's really, really affordable and you get a really big duck for two people. How good does this look? I've been looking forward to this for so long because I think it'll taste completely different than it does at home. I mean, it's where the Peking duck was invented, so it should be good. It's really cool to see how this man carves his duck up. It's like he hasn't done nothing else his whole life. And uh, yeah, you can see it does it like really quickly, but really precisely cutting up like these really nice pieces. Dinner and the show, or lunch and the show. It looks like he's keeping some of the skin separate and some of the meat separate. So I don't know, we'll find out when we get to plate. Just a moment, maybe pancake. Thank you. So they stirred our duck with some condiments for it. We have some small pancakes, some very small cut cucumber and scallions, uh, some sugar and some sweet bean sauce. 
and you're supposed to eat it like this. You start with a pancake, then add some thinly sliced vegetables to it. Add some duck, I like some skin and some meat. Then you add a bit of sweet bean paste. Then you roll it up like this. And that's how you eat it. Bon appetit! Oh, this is so good. This is the best picking duck I've ever, ever had in my life. So excited. I'm not sure what the correct proportions are, but add a little bit more vegetable. There, now it's healthy. Oh, that tastes nothing like the picking duck we have at home. Because at home, usually, like the good part is like the skin because it's so crisp, and then the meat is like often a little bit dryish and not so great, not so tasty. But this is like super succulent and very, very flavorful. You can see how they cut it. So first they carve the meat off the bird and they just put it on the on the plate and it doesn't really look particularly good. But then they keep the skin, the crisp skin, the outside, they keep that separately. And then at the end they just slice that up separately and cover the rest of the bird with it so that it suddenly looks like it's super nice. Oh, it's really, really good. I want to try a piece of the like, skin without any meat. Oh, really fatty. You don't taste that when you try it with the rest of the condiments and, and with some with some meat, uh, with some piece of the actual bird, but it's really, really fatty, the skin. I read somewhere that you're supposed to dip the skin in the sugar. Gives, gives some added texture and flavor, so let's try it. It just makes it sweet <laughs> and crunchy a bit. It's already crunchy, so... Nah, I just like it without. It's better, you can taste more of the duck flavor. We finished all of it. It was so good. Best baking duck I ever had in my life. We were already talking about coming back tonight, which probably we're not going to do, but it's just it's, it's so good. So we finished everything. It didn't look like that much of food when they, when they brought it in. But now that we've eaten everything, I feel stuffed. Stuffed like a Christmas turkey. I like tell a Christmas you. duck? Christmas duck, yeah. Oh, that was so good. Now it's time to walk it off. We'll walk it off for a little bit because we're gonna take the, the metro. Yeah, we're going to head back to the metro and then go two stops further and then head hopefully head out to the Lama Temple. Made it into the subway station. We have now made it into the adventure called the Beijing Metro Station. <laughs> it's pretty complicated. Well, it's not that complicated. It was just like really massive, and it's not always that easy because it's in Chinese names, and there's also some English written names, but they don't really mean anything to us. Doesn't make sense to us. So it's uh, really have to like look on the map where it is and then find a line. And also, the subway system here is just huge. I'll show you. Massive. This metro system has 16 lines. Look how many stops there are. Mm -hmm. We are here at Dongsi Shitiao. It's probably not how you pronounce it, but I just try to read what it says and then pronounce it like I think a Chinese accent should sound. Probably completely, completely wrong. We go to the Meiyongdong Lama Temple. What's pretty crazy here is they have like these electronic billboards where there are commercials that follow the metro as it rides along. I've never seen that. So you'll be going at full speed in the metro and then there will be this billboard just moving and following you and you can just read through the commercial as it moves. I don't know how they do that, but it's pretty impressive. That's China for you. They have some weird stuff here, but it's cool. We have arrived at the Lama Temple. It looks pretty touristy here, a lot of people, especially Chinese actually. But this is the most renowned Tibetan Buddhist temple outside of Tibet. 
um, it's supposed to be pretty good, hence the crowds. And actually, it was turned into, I don't think if I'm pronouncing it right, a la mastery or a la in 1744. And initially, I thought. What does that, that mean? I don't know. I, I think it has something to do with like the, the, the Dalai Lama, but I thought it had something to do with like llamas. So I thought, <laughs> I thought this was going to be a shrine to like llamas, but that's probably the wrong continent. <laughs> I'm gonna be very disappointed, but if I am right, then that should wipe that then, smug face off your, then you get your, off your face. Then you get your own private llama. My own private llama. That would be so nice, except I think it would spit at me a lot. Yeah, probably. <laughs> a Chinese spit too. Fingers, as well. fingers crossed for llamas. A llamasary is a monastery for Tibetan monks. So a Tibetan monk is called a llama. Not an animal, it's a Tibetan monk. I'm not leaving here before I get me some llamas. I don't care where they have to get them from, but it's like a big, it's like, it's gonna be like a big zoo in here. Look. So upon entering the temple, you get some, or you can get some complimentary incense, which you're then supposed to burn right here. So can burn down this temple for not care. People seem to be mostly like using this in worshipping, but we're not Buddhist, so I'm just gonna wiggle it around a little bit and then make a wish. This temple complex is really impressive. Four or five temples after each other, with courtyards in between, places where people are burning incense, uh, people are worshipping, golden statues. And the temples are in like super good shape as well. Yeah, really I mean, beautiful. it reminds me a little bit of what we saw on Ulaanbaatar, but this is way, way better. No Let's go up and explore a bit more. No llama so far though. Very disappointed here. This is such a clickbait temple. I mean, advertising llamas and then you come here, there's no <laughs> llama to be seen. No, I feel very cheated. Wow. wow, and there's another, look, there's another complex right wow. behind this one. In such a cute little alleyway. Oh, that is just incredible. And this is in the middle of Beijing city center. I mean, this is in the middle of the Hutongs. A massive, massive temple complex, so cool. And just out of nowhere it starts to rain like these huge big drops. I mean look at it on the ground, it's really big. The rain is fat here in China. <laughs> Leaving the Lama Temple right now and verdict? Very impressive. Highly recommend coming here. It's beautiful. I mean we spend about one hour here. I think you can do a bit more or a bit less. It's so close to the city center. I mean it's it's in the city center. It's a good stop before or after lunch. Yeah, perfect stop. Just don't come here looking for llamas. You'll be disappointed. Yeah, you might be disappointed. Yeah. I saw some people crying. They were obviously upset. I mean, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Because it started winning, came here to have some coffee called the Science Coffee Shop. Small little specialty coffee shop. Really good. And we both ordered um, an iced latte because it's so warm outside. I wouldn't, I didn't want to drink uh, some warm coffee. Anyway, I think that's it for for our first day here in Beijing. We had a really nice day. We enjoyed getting to know Beijing. We hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe. See you tomorrow at the Forbidden City. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.